Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA Front Office Show, coming to you from Blue Wire Studios at the Win in Las Vegas. Keith, this is our last studio show that we get to. I am sad, my friend, that <laughs> that this is the last show we get to do in person for for a little bit. Yeah, I'm. I'm a, it's it's been such a great week. You know, we, yeah, we've got a chance to do multiple shows in person together, which we don't get to do uh, very often. But th this has been great, and you now I'll be back. You know, for sure when you're back and. And we'll, we'll do more stuff together. It'll be a lot of fun. That's right. That's right. And of course, second to that, second to getting to be in person with you, we get to record on this phenom absolutely. phenomenal yeah, studio, which is, yeah. which is absolutely yeah. a, a treat as well. But yeah. we've got a lot to cover today. So let's let's jump into it. And let's start with Pascal Siakam of the Toronto Raptors. Rumors coming out. And you know, we've been hearing about Siakam trades for, for quite a while. Now, though, we're getting potentially a Pascal Siakam connection to the Indiana Pacers, which is, I, I think, a great fit for Indiana. But how do they get there? Yeah, I, it's weird because the Pacers are not in a spot where most of the guys that are tradable, they want, right? They're, they're their guys, so they're probably not going to be looking to move those guys. So I'm not sure that we're going to find a fit here unless Indiana starts plussing up their offer with draft picks, right? That's how you, you make up the ground. If it's, hey, you got to take on a couple questionable salaries, players that maybe you don't necessarily want, but we can plus up with draft picks, and then that could be how this comes together. They're sitting on a little bit of cap space still, so that makes you know just that little extra that could kind of grease things to keep things moving. But we're we're gonna see. But yeah, now we're Dame Lillard, James Harden, Pascal Siakam, three big names all in the market that we're gonna watch. And uh, one of the pieces of reporting that came out was now they think Siakam more likely to be traded than he is to sign an extension with the Raptors, which is interesting. But that could mean all the way through the trade deadline, right? Because sure. he's an expiring contract. So so we'll see. We don't generally get big big trades this late in the year, but we know we'll get a couple we're still waiting on. So why not add a third? Yeah, I mean, right. And that just gives us that much more to talk about, potentially through into August. I mean, <laughs> could so, be. hey, from a content perspective, we'll take it because yeah. that's when things get pretty, exactly. pretty slow. So we could yeah. have a date. Now, you were joking before we came on the air, though. It's all going to happen while you're on your vacation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going on vacation. I will be completely off the grid uh, for you know a week. So that's when all this stuff will 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 go down, and you know you'll you'll find a way to break it down without me. I'm sure. We'll just we'll call Adam Silver and we'll say, hey, let's put the pause on this. For, it, for, yeah. Let's wait for yeah. Keith to get back. He'll he'll receive second it. second moratorium. Exactly. No, no transactions. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, the, yeah. The they Keith, they the, care about me that much. The Keith Smith vacation <laughs> moratorium. The NBA will will shut down. Uh, there's another another move that came out. Uh, Isaiah Stewart uh, got a, a four-year, sixty-four million dollar extension. What did you think about about this? It kind of came from out of the blue. It wasn't something we were hearing a lot about. Yeah, generally we'll hear those not the max guys, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, Lamelo Ball. They get done quick, right? Those get finished. They they get put out there right away, almost like a free agent signing. The non-max ones they tend to be towards the end of summer league, and now we're still kind of like midway through. Uh, summer league so a little bit surprising little rich for my blood it's yeah. just it's not so much for Stewart. i think the value's fine for him at 16 million but the pacers have james wiseman jalen duran marvin bagley the third they've got all those big guys including Stewart in that mix all five four of those guys probably best at the five so that starts to become you know where are we going with this but it's not a bad deal. They have the cap flexibility long term that they can can bring, can you know bring that salary into their books without really causing a mess for themselves. And you just kind of go and you continue the four four man steel cage match for you know minutes at the 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 four and the five. Yeah, I mean in terms of an overall roster build, maybe you can quibble over do they have too many guys at, at the five? But I don't think this is something where the Pistons a year or two from now aren't going to be looking at this contract and going, man, we can't move this thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they'll move that, or one of the other guys will wash out and they'll move on from them, and it'll all end up fine. But it just a it, it, little odd in the moment that you're locking in that kind of money, but. That's mid-level money, basically, where we're going, barely above what the mid-level will be. So, you know, good good overall signing for them. All right, let's start our favorite segment, the dames of our lives. It's like sands of the hourglass. <laughs> it's the dames of our lives. We got another update on the Damian Lillard front, and this is the Portland Trailblazers essentially running the superstar trade demand playbook here by saying, we're not going to rush anything. We're going to take our time. We're not going to rush into, into a bad deal. i uh, we're seeing kind of the negotiation through the media, right? Everybody trying to grab leverage here. How long is it really going to take for this thing to go down? Yeah, this was Joe Cronin, the Blazers GM himself said, this is going to take time. 
right? It wasn't like, and he was, I thought he was very respectful in the way he handled the comments on it of like, Hey, we, we got to get this right. And we sure. respect and love Dame for everything he did. But now this is about the Blazers and our future and we have to get this right. So, so I thought, you know, he he's right on that, right? You please, as I put it, you know, some people are like, yeah, but it's not like he's going to change his mind. And I said, no one wants to change his mind. They can only trade him once. Yeah. It's not like if you're like, oh man, we kind of blew that. Let's, let's redo. Right. There's no reset button. Go back in your, you know, to your former save in your video game and start again. It's done and it's done. So, so we'll see. So, you know, I don't mind them saying, you know, we're going to take our time on this. That also is, you know, let's read between the lines. Hey, Miami, let's go get, get yeah. moving on whatever else you got to do to make your offer better. Cause it's not going to fit. Right. 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 Yeah. We're not going to do this unless it winds up being a deal that we really like. Exactly. And look for, for Portland, you're right. This, this is maybe the most important decision for the next decade of, yeah. the, of this franchise, right? What yep. they what they do here. And I think the other thing we have to, to factor in is it's Portland. They're not a major free agent right. destination. So what they get in this deal is going to be the major building blocks for them moving forward. It's not like they can go, well, we've got a ton of cap room, so we're going to be that landing spot for player X, Y, and Z. And it's going to be how do the, how do the guys we get, the picks, whatever the, the package comes to, how do they fit with Scoot? How do they fit with Shaden Sharp? That's what it has to be moving forward, because otherwise you're you're going to be in a spot where it just doesn't work for you. All right, let's let's talk a little bit about the 76ers who did wind up matching. I I said I thought they might not because they had brought in Montrezl Harrell because they brought in Mo Bamba. You and and our guest Jake Fisher both said, yeah, I think they probably do match. And you guys were right; they did match the offer sheet on Paul Reed, uh, three year, twenty three million, only one year guaranteed though. So that was interesting in the contract. Yeah, and you thought they weren't going to match because you still have former Laker love for for Trez and Bomb. That's, right? that's what it is. That's what it was. I yeah, said, these guys need their over. minutes. Come that's on. It. Yeah, they, they just need need time. Just not with the Lakers, right? <laughs> no, no. They just need time somewhere else. Um, no, yeah, it was. It's just too good of a value, right? Seven million dollars a year, basically. It's three years, twenty three million. You can't let that walk out the door for what Paul Reed is. He's too important of a player uh, to what Philly has done is building him up. Bamba and Harold, those are both one-year minimum deals. So you can move on from them if you need to very easily. So I think what you're looking here to do, if you were Utah, you made it questionable because of the non-guaranteed nature of the last two years. I think it was also Danny Ainge, a little bit of trolling towards his former uh, mentee, <laughs> Daryl Morey, you know, of, you know, hey, only, only the, it's only guaranteed if you make the second round of the playoffs, which is kind of needling them. Like, you guys always make it that far, but then you never make it further. But yeah, too good of a value. Can't can't let that guy go. You got to match on that. That's kind of fun. There, there needs to be more of that in the NBA, yeah. like trolling through yeah, good, through contracts, yeah, through, through offer sheets. Yeah, a little bit of good natured fun between between friends. Why not? Can we get a little crazy? Like have like like if the Lakers were to to, to submit an offer to the to a Celtics restricted free agent, put in there that like. Like the GM must wear purple and gold or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that that probably won't time. fly. Me, maybe in the new CBA, I haven't finished reading the entire <laughs> thing. I'll check. All right, let's talk about uh, D'Angelo. This was news you broke yesterday. D'Angelo Russell uh, waived his no trade clause uh, on his deal, and I, how do you think that came? Because even with the new CBA, that hasn't been very common so far in this year's free agency. So, how did this come about? Yeah, where so. What happens with this? And a lot of people are like, why did he have a no trade clause? Well, what happens is if you sign a contract where you're going to have bird rights after that, that year ends, and it's a, in this case with Russell, it's functionally a one year deal because he has a player option on the second year, you, you lose your bird rights if you're traded. So what happens with D'Angelo Russell is he could then block a trade. We, I know you know this because we talked about it because the Lakers had like 15 guys yep. in that boat. And the big one was always Contavious Caldwell Pope. Right. He was always like that nice piece of salary matching, but it's like he can block any trade if he wanted to. And then ultimately he didn't do it and he was part of the Westbrook trade. Right. But in, in Russell's case, in the new CBA, when you negotiate a new contract, the player has the right to waive the ability to veto trades. And D'Angelo Russell did it. And by everything I've looked at, because it's brand new, so it's only this year's signings, he's the first player to to do it and say no. So my guess is there was probably a lot of back and forth and it was – all right, we'll give you a little bit more money. We'll give you the player option, but you have to waive that, right? And that's part of the negotiation process. It's just another layer in there. So it wasn't that he waived a no trade clause, sure. like what Bradley Beal has. He didn't have that, but it's that one year de facto or implied 
uh, trade veto that he had, and and he did uh, waive that. So that's that's kind of a you know fun wrinkle that now yeah. we're gonna have to watch for those things because that that's a new thing under this new CBA. And honestly, I think it's a really good change. And and it's a point now that you another piece that you can add into a negotiation process. Hey, if you'll waive this no trade clause, it's de facto no trade clause, whatever we want to call it, right? If you'll waive this, then we'll give you a player option on the second year. We'll give you a little bit more money. You know, it's just another thing that you can give a little bit on in terms of a, a compromise and a contract negotiation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit more money, you know, player option, whatever it is. So, and this deal, you know, value is fine for it. It is now set up very much. That's the, probably the biggest tradable piece yeah. that the Lakers have contract-wise, but, you know, it's not bad. All right. Uh, another, well, now, former Laker. I was going to say, you're He's, about to call him. I was, I was almost going to call D'Angelo Russell a former <laughs> former Laker. I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know if Rob Plank is going to trade him by, by, by the trade. Then we'll see. But uh, but Kyle Kuzma, uh, his deal, the numbers, the initial reporting, not quite accurate on his yep. contract. Yeah, and this is, right, fun with numbers, right, yeah. where it comes out, well, what looks best? Well, $102 million sounds great. It's $102 million if he hits all of his incentives, but it's $90 million. Still pretty good, right? I'll take it if, you know, somebody wants to throw that. By the way, we're ready. We'll take it, right? We'll, we'll yeah. sign. You know, today, before summer league ends, you, you'll hit us before we go on. Oh, for sure. Um, But, you know, $90 million is what it's actually going to be. The other cool wrinkle is it's a descending contract or a declining contract. So, starts high at $25.6 million, comes down to $19.4 million over the life of the four years of the deal. So, really good work by Washington because Kuzma is he's by no means old. He's in his late 20s. But now... If something happens and that contract starts to turn a little sour or whatever, you're not sitting on the other way, right? Where it started at 20 and built up to 26, mm -hmm. you're in a spot where, where the number comes down. So, you know, all really good work by, by them, you know, in this deal. And 90 million for Kyle Kuzma, that's, you know, good, good money. You yeah. know, by his last year of the deal, 19 million, like you're It'll again, be a bargain. Four years from now, that's going to be barely above the mid level. So, you know, re really good. Yeah, and on top of that, you look at this Wizards team in terms of where they are in their in their roster build. You know, three years down the road, when they're maybe they're starting to get good at that point, they're looking uh -huh. to go sign somebody, and that's going to give them it's not a ton, but a little bit more yeah. flexibility than if you had gone the other way with the contract. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get that more wiggle room there. Or if you're still rebuilding, it's an easier contract to move because it's yeah. only going to be 19 million instead of 25. Yeah. So all, all around good, solid work by Washington. Uh, and Kyle Kuzma was not the only person to sign a, a new contract though. We also saw Greg Popovich. He yeah. was beloved around the league. Pop got a new contract, five years, 80 million, but interesting the language of the way it was reported because he's not just a coach. And so I do wonder like, is does Pop really coach for the entire five years or does he just move into the front office role completely? Yeah. It, I'm going to, Keep an eye on that, right? We all will be over the next, you know, five years because I think they said it'll be 79 at the end of that, you know, is how old he'll be. You know, when he finishes, that'll be, a, I'm thinking, if not, a really close to a 30-year run uh, coaching the Spurs by the end of that. Like, that's that's a long time, mm -hmm. right? So so I think what's going to be fun with this is they put in the language of he is the president of basketball operations, which he is, and the head coach, which he's the only one with that combo uh, in the league. And that makes it very easy to say, well, we signed him as both. Now he's dropping the one part of it. So I think we're still in the phase where he's got one Binyama now, right? He's probably all kinds of energized right. and ready to go. Uh, so you get, you get him, you bring him in, you, you kind of do your thing here for a little bit and you go. So I, I think he's in a pretty good place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that uh, we'll be keeping an eye on throughout the, the life of this contract. How long does Pop actually coach? But again, he's been phenomenal for that organization. No question. He's obviously going to go down in history as one of the, one of the greatest coaches ever. And here he is getting rewarded. And we know that, uh, that he'll be part of the organization for at least the next five years, even if it is not in that coaching role anymore. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, the reality is he's going to be as part of the Spurs doing for something as long as he for wants. as long as he wants for forever. If he wants to, you know, uh, yeah, well, with that, and that's how they want it too. Uh, one last quick note, because I know we're wrapping up here. Just an interesting CBA thing, right? This new, the, the Palinka rule, the second yes. round pick exception. Every single player from the second round that is signed is either signed a two-way, which we've talked about a lot of guys, guys get drafted knowing they're going to get two-way contracts, or they've signed under the, under the second round pick exception. We haven't seen any standard uh, 
things there. So blink a rule, alive and well. Including the Lakers second Lakers rounder, Max it, yes. Lewis. Thank you. <laughs> the Palinka rule was put into effect and they and they took advantage of it. If they didn't, I was going to lose a key. And see, here I was hoping that little bit they left from the Gabe Vincent <laughs> exception, they were going to use it that way just to just to come back at us and troll us a little bit. But, and they, and they yeah. were going to say, wait, that started this year? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, that rule really is for us? We can use it too? So, yeah. Oh, no. But a little bit of fun there at the end so just yeah no nothing to, to, to keep an eye on but yeah it, it's been a great week yeah. out here beautiful studio we've had a blast you're recording here at blue wire studios it's been amazing so you know thanks to everybody here who's done all that for us and uh, helped us uh you know put all this together and, and also seriously thank you to all the people that we we have ran into out yes. here all the fans who have said so many kind things about about the show we truly that means so much you know we see we see the comments and everything that are on on twitter that are on youtube um, and those are, those are of course, super meaningful, uh, but meeting some of you in person has been absolutely phenomenal and getting, getting to hear how much you enjoy the show. Uh, it, it seriously means so much to us. Yeah, it does. We, I met a guy who said he watches the show every night while he's making dinner for the family and to know where that kind of integral part uh, of your day to day is, is amazing. It's been so cool. It's been great to meet everybody. You got one day left. So if you That's catch right. this early enough, we're, we're, we're still out here for one more day. Um, you know, and if you see us around, you'll know, say, say hi for sure. And, you know, again, if you ever have a chance to can come to summer league, you got to come. Yep. It's the coolest experience for an NBA fan. And it's been great, but yeah, it's been an awesome week and I'm so glad we were able to do this. Yes. Yeah. This has been a blast and we need to make sure we do this again next year, but thank you everybody. Make sure you do subscribe to the NBA front office, YouTube channel, as well as the podcast site, Apple podcast, Spotify, wherever it is you listen to podcasts till next time, everybody see you and stay safe.